Oh, sorry, mate. Hey guys, welcome to Forage Box TV. My name is Jim. Just out in the woods here by the coast in uh, North Wales. <clears throat> I'm just looking for sea beet today. I'm going to cook up a nice lunch, something quick and easy. Bit of a side dish, really, I suppose. But it's more about going into detail about sea beet. Nice short video today. Just, uh, yeah, really getting to grips with this very common coastal plant that hopefully you guys can find on your own. So, just gonna head out along the coast. Here we have sea beet. Now, I'm not gonna eat from here because of this sludgy patch on the sea. But if you just, if I just take a leaf, you'll see it's got this beautiful waxy leaf that is very similar. Well, some people say it's like spinach, but that's a bit of a marketing ploy, really. It's more like Swiss chard. It's got this slightly fibrous stem, which is still delicious. Um, and yeah, you can use it in exactly the same way that you would spinach. So that's what I'll be doing today. It grows in these, it's a perennial plant. It grows in these great big tufts. As I said, I don't really want to take it from the sludgy patch. That's not necessarily going to be the tastiest. And it's just, this is high tide now and it's just growing by the sea. Uh, yeah, it doesn't mind getting a little bit wet. It tends to grow above the highest tide mark, but that's not a hard and fast rule. And in fact, if I have a look around, I can see a few little tufts of it on the other bank there where it's growing out of the water. Remember, this is high tide, and actually it's one of the highest tides of the year, so that sort of shows you its habitat. Right, we're going to go along here, and we're going to try and find ourselves some more. Here you can see it growing out of the water, the highest tide. That's all grass that's growing around it there. That's obviously gets a good dousing once a month during the highest tide. We're gonna leave that there for now. We want stuff that's growing somewhere slightly nicer than that. You'll have to forgive the wind, guys, because it's a bit blustery. But now we're talking. You see all these lovely tufts here. These are all perennial plants that will just sit here very nicely getting splashed by splashed by the sea occasionally a bit of salty sea air all tucked up behind you can see a nice big juicy one just in there looks a bit like dock I guess on camera but it's really not like that in real life and as you say it's this charred looking thing here so we're going to start picking our lunch from here so in new dad style in new dad style I've actually forgotten a bag to put things in because I left the house tired and obviously in a rush. So I'm using my trusty snood that I've tied a knot in the end and I can fill with my lunch. It makes a bit of a makeshift bag. So you'll see guys, I'm just taking one leaf per stalk essentially, sort of giving the plant a chance to survive. Just go and have a look what's going on down here. Usual rules about dog zones and whatnot, trying to avoid dog wheat. You see I'm just taking one leaf per stem. Ooh, I'm just doing a bit of a wibble. Yeah. We're getting there. Okay guys, gonna start doing our cooking. Just got my little stove here. Got my nice uh, battered old frying pan. So first of all, I need to get the stove lit. Oh, we might struggle with the wind here. Let's see how we get on. So it's just a tiny little bit of rapeseed oil here. Don't need too much. We're gonna chuck in our sea beans.
Nice full pan, I'll take that home for my dinner. Just starting to wilt down now. A little bit of fish sauce. And a little bit of soy sauce. And then whilst I was out earlier, I found this fennel, wild fennel growing by the sea. I'm going to just roughly break that up into there. Simmer away nicely, and then it might be time to stir it up. Okay, so it is a bit windy out here. I'm just going to tip that on there without trying to throw sauce everywhere. Where's my spork? Trusty spork there. Get those last little bits. There we go, how about that for a little seaside snack roll. Freshly picked sea beet, freshly picked uh, wild fennel, bit of soy sauce, bit of fish sauce, bit of oil. Bosh. And there we go, leave no trace. Okay guys, so that was that was foraged sea beet, foraged uh, wild fennel. Uh, made up for my lunch. I'm just gonna walk back slowly now, uh, where I'm probably gonna forage me some chips from the butty van, because I think that's the law when you're by the sea. It's not a particularly warm day. Uh, it's a bit nippy, I'm wearing about five layers, but that's fine by me. Um, if you are interested in uh, wild ingredients, foraged ingredients, then have, head over to our website, uh, foragebox.co.uk. You can get your hands on some uh, foraged ingredients. Uh, we've got a subscription service, so you can get them. That's the best value for getting them into your meals every day, and they're dead easy to cook, just like you've seen me do back there. Um, I'd also encourage you to check out the workshops that we do, so you can learn to forage for yourself, or just have a browse. It's quite a nice functional website now we've had it just had it upgraded um, yeah please like and subscribe all that jazz all the usual stuff the more you subscribe the more it helps me out the less I have to spend inside at my laptop um, and yeah there'll be more of these videos coming up sorry I'm just watching my feet the waves are splashing splashing my feet look I'll be getting out and doing a few more short videos over the next few months for staged release um, but write down in the comment section below any wild ingredients you'd really like me to take a look at if there's anything that stands out that you'd be really interested in finding out more about or seeing me cook up with them uh, yeah please do guys it's been an absolute pleasure it's a nice windy day as you can probably hear on the microphone i'm gonna leave you there bye bye